Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am a chemistry professor, but I'm also a mom. My daughter, at an early age, became concerned with the environment. She was hearing about polar bears dying off, melting ice caps. She and her friends decided to form a Save the Earth Club. <laughs> at six years old, in the first grade, over the years, I've seen them become worried about the world that they will inherit. I see that concern in my daughter, and I feel that same concern in all of us. Climate change is a problem. We see changes in our weather. We hear about rising sea levels, whole cities, communities, even countries going underwater. There are large forest fires, crops that fail. This sounds dire. It is dire. What we've come to know is that high levels of CO2 in our atmosphere are responsible for these things, and they continue to increase with no foreseeable change, no decrease. But what I've come to understand through my own research and through hearing about the work of others is that there's reasons for hope. We can combat these rising levels of CO2, and we have reasons to be optimistic because we have done it before. As a nation, as a globe, we have tackled big problems in the environment. We used science and engineering to solve an atmospheric pollution problem. Some of you here will remember the acid rain of the 1970s, the brown forests of Europe, the marble statues whose features began to melt as acid disintegrated them. The world saw this and recognized that they needed to do something about the components of acid rain. These are chemical pollutants that we found at high levels. So treaties were formed, agreements were made. We began to use a new technology. It used a material that had been discovered in the 1950s, 20 years earlier, by a French scientist named Eugene Hodry. His material sat on the shelf for decades until it was recognized that something was needed to clean up these pollutants. They began using it in smokestacks and chimneys, of power plants and factories, and those scrubbing boxes removed those components, those pollutants that were responsible for acid rain. But I know many of us think, wait a minute, smog and things come from cars. What would we do about the millions of cars and the smog that they produce? It would simply be a problem that was too difficult, too expensive, too impossible. Except it wasn't any of these. Today, every one of us has one of these scrubbing devices on our cars. It's called a catalytic converter, and it uses those same materials that Hodri developed for us. And so now, as we drive around town, we're cleaning up our exhaust as we go. So imagine, what if we could do the same for CO2? What if we could capture it out of smokestacks and chimneys? That's called carbon capture. And there are new materials that are like sponges for CO2. It traps the molecules and holds them tightly, remarkably while allowing other gases to pass through. And when society is ready, we'll have these materials ready to deploy to solve the problems of high CO2 levels that lead to climate instability and a warming planet. These carbon CO2 materials are remarkable. In the space of only a thimbleful of this powder, it has as much surface area as three football fields. These materials have small pockets and tunnels and tortuous paths that hold the CO2 inside. And with so much real estate, well, a small amount of powder can trap a lot of gas. There are thousands of scientists and engineers trying to develop these new materials right now because we believe that this will help solve 
our climate change problem. Just as one scientist might use the equivalent of building block like Legos, somebody else is using something like Tinker Toys, and still somebody else like Lincoln Logs, with so many different people working with so many different building blocks, incredible discoveries can be made. So it might be easy to imagine capturing CO2 from smokestacks and chimneys, but what about the high levels of CO2 in the air around us? Well, it turns out there are several places worldwide that are attempting this at pilot scale. It's called direct air capture, and in one site in Zurich, Switzerland, they're using industrial washing machine-sized units filled with these special sponges for CO2, and it's capturing the gas molecules from the air. Imagine a solar farm with hundreds, maybe thousands of solar panels capturing sunlight and turning it into electricity. Well, we can imagine a CO2 farm doing the same, capturing CO2 and sequestering it. Now imagine for a moment, you have all this CO2 you've captured, what do you do with it? Well, in one project, a team is trying to turn it into artificial building materials and research funded by Bill Gates. In another team, they're trying to convert CO2 to a new chemical by adding just one atom of oxygen. Well, we chemists call that carbonate. You call it chalk. And the startup company that makes it calls it artificial coral that they hope to use to replenish coral reefs. Oh, and those guys in Switzerland, they recycle the CO2 that they capture. They squeeze it out from those machines, releasing the CO2 gas, and they send it off to a bottling plant to carbonate soda. <laughs> so the next time you hear a dire headline, maybe your kids start a club, or your neighbors start to fret about climate change, now you know there's not only hope, there are scientific solutions. And today, when people ask my daughter about climate change, she can share her concerns and also her hopes. She'll hold up a thimble and tell you how much CO2 it can hold. Three football fields. We just need to get started. Oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Yeah.